this thing. Let's have a go at the shot. Hold it there. Don't move a muscle. Don't apologise. That's not quite. Was that when you were addressing the white ball? Yeah, probably. You did well. Yeah, that's the problem. You were moving around quite a bit after you played. So I'm going to do the same thing for you again. Just give you the red after you play. lost it because yeah. there was quite oh, a lot of movement. Um, good shot, you got the result, mm. however it wasn't with a consistent delivery mm. because what happened was, what? was that great? and what did that cause you to do? Get up. Yeah, effectively you did this. I'll exaggerate a little bit. very common. So what we want to learn, and this is for all of us actually, is tracking with our eyes, not with our head. So if you could stand by the middle pocket here, just stand here by this middle pocket. So <clears throat> I'd like you to track the tip of the cue with your eyes, but not with your head. Okay. And then you can't see it, can you? And you still keep the head locked, even though you can't see it, still keep it locked. Even if the white or the tip goes out of your vision. So for example here, the pro would uh, play the ball like this, putting the red. Okay, I can't see the white anymore, Accurate. I, I can actually peripherally, but not as clearly as I want to. But it doesn't mean that I do that, because that breaks my body discipline of finishing in the same place, which is vital, under pressure. When you start approaching 50 breaks or 100 break, you need all the help you can get in your habits being good and solid. So yeah, what we want is all your attention on red. I didn't look to the white until after the red had left the pocket. So I missed that for a genuine reason of aiming, not because I was tracking the white. completely solid after you deliver the cue. Hold it. Is that where you were addressing? Yeah. <laughs> okay, now we have a learning. Mm -hmm. Remember what you did, adjust the highs accordingly, and when you're ready, execute that new plan. better. So within one shot, you've gone from here to 5% of perfection. So if you were there, let's call that 100%. Within one shot of learning, you got to within 5% of perfection. Mm. And that's how you learn. By staying in position, knowing if you've delivered accurately, then you've got some data to play with, haven't you? Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So what did you pick up there? What was helping you there to play the shot better? Yeah, I just found it almost impossible to stay still. Watching that mic going over there for some reason, I just 
-hmm. Yeah, the two lessons are tracking with your eyes, not your head, and also the discipline of watching the ball. If you don't watch the ball to pocket, you don't deserve to play with snooker. Because mm -hmm. it's not fair to the people who do. Because they play well because they track the ball to the pocket. It's the what which is the most important target, white or red? Red. Yeah. So put all your attention on that. You know, if you couldn't see where the cue ball was going, or if the game was not about the cue ball at all, if it's only about potting, you'd just concentrate on the pot, wouldn't you? So that's what you do until it's hit that cushion or the pocket. Then flick your eyes to the white. And things that you practice with, you get the timing of it as well. You know, not getting up too early. You know, it's, it's a question of you know staying on that fraction longer and making that a permanent habit rather than if, you, if you're not practicing enough, you're not getting into that routine, and that's when you start coming up off the shot. It is partly. Uh, and it's also a lack of commitment to track the object ball. Mm -hmm. It's very, very common in players who aren't making regular 50 breaks. I can almost guarantee that a player who's capable, who's got the setup at the table and genuine queuing not to make 40s and 50s regularly, is not tracking the ball to the pocket. It's one of the big separators between plus 50 regularly and below 50 regularly. It's massive, and uh, I had a quite a um, solid conversation with a client of mine the other day about this. Oh, no, I keep watching the white. Um, no, no, it's too difficult. And um, no, just do it. Forget the white ball. You're not allowed to track the white. Watch the red to the pocket. No, I look at the pocket early. You're not allowed to do that. You'll see where the ball's going uh, if you track the ball to the pocket. I'm sure, I figured that. Yeah, I was getting 40s and it was all going very, very well. And he was struggling to make 20 before that. It can make a huge difference. Mm -hmm. I do that a lot when I'm on the black to split the reds. Mm -hmm. I look at the white straight away on, on those reds. Very easily done. And you miss the black every time. Absolutely. Mm -hmm and present a gift to your yeah, opponent. Right. I mean, that's why on a black eye, personally, would just play um, 6 out of 10 speed max, maybe 7. Just no, the reds, yeah. Yeah, open 2 or 3 reds. Yeah. Manageable, easier, simpler. Pick one red to cannon. Don't do an atomic explosion yeah. in the pack. Just pick off 2 or 3 reds, that's it. Be happy with that. Yeah. Pop those reds, open it up again. Good work. Good luck.